For the past 3,000 years, this letter has been known as Nun, because that's what the Phoenicians called it. But to the ancient Hebrews and to the creator of the ancient Hebrew alphabet, this letter was and is Nahash, the snake. Why was the name changed from Nahash to Nun? Why is there a snake in Father's alphabet? And why do most people who study ancient Hebrew think that this letter is a picture of a seed and not a serpent? We'll discuss all of that and more in today's episode. But first, know this. If you're not a big fan of snakes, that's okay. You're in good company. When Father first turned Moses' staff into a Nahash, Moses ran. But he got used to it. If there's one story in the Bible that explains what a snake is doing in Father's alphabet, it's the story of the bronze serpent, when Father used a snake as a symbol for life. The event takes place during Israel's wandering in the wilderness and was recorded for us by Moses. We'll listen to a few verses, then talk about the meanings of the letter Nahash. Then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery servant, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Just like Father used the Nahash in the wilderness to give people a chance to live, the letter Nahash is used in Hebrew words to mean life. We see it in words like nefesh, which means living being or soul, and also in the word grace, which in Hebrew is chen. In the days of Noah, Father flooded the planet to destroy all life from the face of the earth. But Noah, it says, found chen, he found grace. By the letters, Noah's life was protected. Yeshua took the meaning of Nahash to a whole new level when he linked the Nahash Nahushet to his death on the cross. This is one of those scriptures that most people have heard so many times they can quote it in their sleep, and maybe to a lot of people it's lost meaning. But let's look at it in the context that Yeshua put it in and throw some paleo in there, because he paints a beautiful picture here. He's talking to a teacher of Israel who's familiar with the story of the bronze serpent. And he says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. One of the uses of the letter Nahash in Hebrew words is to describe things that are bright and reflective, like snakeskin. Besides the word bronze, Nahoshet, which we saw earlier, there are many words used to describe the brilliance around Father, which use the letter Nahash. The prophets Ezekiel and Daniel describe his throne as a burning, fiery flame. The word for fiery in Hebrew is near. 
Above his throne are sparkling seraphim angels. And the word for sparkling is nitzim. And it's written that those seraphim look like nahoshet, like brilliant copper. Father himself is described as having brightness all around him. And the word for brightness in Hebrew is noga. These descriptions were all written at a time long before light bulbs and all the different types of light that we're used to today. Back in those days, if you wanted to describe something that was bright, your points of reference were things like the sun and fire and Nahash. This is the Hebrew word har. It means mountain. When it rains or snows on a har, water flows downhill, looking like a Nahash. And this is how a Nahar is created. Nahar means river in Hebrew. This is the word Negev. It's the name of the desert in southern Israel. If you know a little paleo, you might see the letter Beit and the letter Nahash and get the sense that this place is home to snakes. The concordance says that the word Negev has nothing to do with snakes. It comes from an unused word meaning parched. But look at the paleo, and then look at what Father has to say about the Negev. Some of you may have been taught that this ancient Hebrew letter is a picture of a seed and not a snake. That's because people try to associate this image with the modern name of the letter, which is Nun. But the word Nun is not original Hebrew. There's Joshua's dad who was named Nun, but Joshua's dad was a man who was born and raised in Egypt, where they worshipped a god named Nun. The closest word to Nun in the scriptures is Nin, and it means offspring. So some people take this letter to be a seed, which is a type of offspring. There are a few problems with this. The word seed is used all throughout the scriptures, and it's always written as Zerah, not Nin. It's also pretty common knowledge that despite this letter being called Nun for the past 3,000 years, the original picture was a Nahash, a snake. And most importantly, the words speak for themselves. Take the word snake bite, for example. It starts with the letter Nahash and the letter Sheen. Sheen means teeth in Hebrew. So what's involved in a snake bite? Is it snake teeth or seed teeth? You be the judge. All of this confusion started with the Phoenicians when they chose to change the name of the letter from Nahash to Nun. For 3,000 years or so, no one has really seemed to mind. But over here at Original Hebrew, we mind. The Phoenicians are the same people who, for most of modern history, have been given credit for creating Father's Alphabet. And they're not around to set the record straight. So we'll give it a try here today. Okay, everybody, so we try to bring some new developments or some new information because this is original Hebrew, which takes original Hebrew script. 
because uh, that's the way Creator, otherwise Father, wanted it to be. Now, I, they always uh, are telling us that uh, the Hebrew alphabet came from Phoenicia, from the Phoenicians. And uh, that's what it's credited to. So let's take a look. Here are all the people that got together and used the Phoenician alphabet. Notice here is the Minoan script from 1550 to 1050. Notice they got their own script. Here is an example of the Mari. Notice in 1800 they have their own script. Here is the Luvians. These people live right, uh, right at the south, east corner of Anatolia, otherwise it's Turkey. Coastal people. They have their own script, 10th century. Here we got linear B tablets from Pylos, <laughs> one of the islands in, uh, in the Greek set of islands. They call it the Peloponnesians. And here's their script. 13th century. 1375, Linear B, and here we got a fragment of uh, Linear A from 1800 to 1450. Here is 1600 to 1450, Linear A, and uh, notice this one. Uh, they say it's Phoenician writing, right? Right. Now here's the king of Phoenicia, Tyr. Is Phoenicia. The capital of Phoenicia. Now here's the king of Phoenicia in his own script writing to Pharaoh of Egypt in their own script. Now when they got their own script, how did they go all of a sudden uh, original Hebrew paleo writing? <laughs> right. It's clearly a different script. Clearly, clearly cuneiform. In every case, they all have the linear A, the linear B. They have their Lubian type writing. I mean, they have uh, their own writing in Mari. And all of a sudden, after uh, 900 uh, B.C., they're all writing in Hebrew, and they're calling it Phoenician. Right. Well, I smell a rat. Okay. And uh, these are the people that turned the letter Nahash into Nun. Israelites regain the habits of their neighbors. Yep. That if you don't, if you don't uh, keep your own ways, you're going to get their habits. And guess what? They took a Nahash and they let it turn into a noon. Israel. Yeah. It's always been snake to the Israelites. But when you're uh, using it for a uh, merchant uh, navy and to uh, sell brands, you know, look at you go, uh, what is the, what brand is it? Oh, this is Nihash brand. <laughs> what does that mean? Snake brand. Oh, no, no. No, thanks. No, oh, thanks. Now watch. Uh, there was a, there's a really ugly crab that nobody wanted to eat. It was called spider crab. It was all over the ocean and no one wanted to touch it because it's spider crab. Some guy from Japan went and renamed it king crab and now everybody eats it. So you don't sell the hash brand, you sell noon. Noon brand. Noon brand. Now what does noon mean? Uh, they say it means fish in Phoenician. Really? Yeah. Well, 
fish brand instead of snake brand sells better when you're a merchant. So it's a, a business decision. It's a business decision because it's always been the hash. The letter noon was originally the hash. We're still gonna call it noon. Right? We'll call it noon, but for for original paleo, the hash. In the garden, there was every kind of animal. But the one he said to watch out for the most is Nahash, the snake. Now this snake uh, walked, talked, did everything, <laughs> right, Nahash. Then he got punished, and uh, he has to be on the ground. However, that snake in the middle of the Garden of Eden is sanctioned by Father to be there. And you're supposed to listen to Father and not go to the middle of the garden and have dinner with Nahash, <laughs> right. okay? So they did, and uh, they had a problem with Nahash. And there you have it. Don't have dinner with Nahash, and you won't have a problem with Nahash. Next time around, we'll talk about the fallout from that famous dinner, and we'll also discuss the days to come when the curse is lifted. See you guys. <laughs>